Hey guys, so as promised, I'm gonna show you guys how to improve your freehand skills. Now the first step to improving your line work and your drawing ability is to get to know your tools because the right brush will dictate what you can achieve with it and what you can. Now what do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you. These are a few of my favorite brushes. Now don't be worried, I'm going to actually show you what they're good for, but essentially you really only need maybe two to three brushes. So what I recommend is that you, one, get a short and a long bristle brush like these two. These are my favorite brushes from BRS. There are very similar brushes like Presto. And you also want to invest in a brush that is not so fine. So you'll see that both of these are short liner brushes, but one is a little fatter even though the tip is fine. And I'm going to tell you why that's important later. So your first exercise is to just practice on paper. You want to work on a flat surface and you want to press and lift. And what this does is it gives you an idea of what your line quality is going to be like, whether you get thin lines or thick lines. And that is your opportunity to play around, see what your brushes can actually do. So now we're going to move on to exercise number two, and this just involves tracing. So again, we're going to work on a flat surface, and you're now going to use a product. You can use um, art gel, which is what I'm using in this video, or you can use acrylic paint, whatever you're comfortable with. The only thing I don't recommend at this point is nail polish, and that's just a whole nother story. So you're just going to place some tracing paper over some images and make sure that these images are very simple, number one, and number two, make sure they are the same size as the uh, canvas that you intend to work on. So if you have a really small nail bed, make sure that you print a really small image. Or if you have a little bit more space, then you can make them a little bit bigger. And I mean it guys, make these images super simple. I highly recommend that you do start off with a circle and a box and an X. The reason why is because as you can see, I'm using different techniques in these. What I did was is I first started with the square so that I can find the straight sides and then I find the straight angles in a circle because yes, they do exist. And then I connect them with a curved line. Now once you're comfortable drawing on a flat surface, you now have to adapt to drawing on a curved surface. So now we're actually going to go to a nail. Now I highly recommend that you mount your nail onto the end of a brush like I am. The reason why is because you want to get that sensation of holding someone's finger, especially if you're a nail tech. And that goes for everyone. If you always hold someone's finger a certain way, if you always draw a line from a certain angle, continue to do that because you are going to eventually develop muscle memory so you don't want to break your routine. Improving your line art skills is all about forming habits. If you practice on a regular basis and often, eventually you just kind of know what your brush is going to do before you even do it. So part of that is muscle memory and the other part is just habit. Now going from drawing on a flat surface to a curved nail is actually pretty difficult. Um, you might find that you may be teaching yourself kind of how to draw all over again and that's not unusual so give yourself time. You'll notice that I do use a few tips. You see that I always anchor my pinky because it keeps your hand steady and your line straight. You can also give yourself guidelines like I did before I drew the triangle. Now the second part of exercise number three is that you get to freehand. So you basically just want to see what your brushes can really do as I mentioned at the beginning. I took the same brush and I drew a line that was thicker and then you'll see the one right next to it is a little bit thinner. That is the difference between pressing and lifting. Now this third line that I've drawn has a little bulb at the top and that is what happens when you have too much product on your brush. So we're going to turn that into a leaf but you can see that when I try to draw this leaf I'm kind of, I just don't have very much control and that's because the bristles are too long. It's basically like holding a pencil. The closer my hand is to the eraser the more loose my wrist is meaning the less control I have over what the tip is doing. So I'm going to take a shorter pointed brush but I'm not going to take a liner brush. The reason why is because if you look at the base of the ferrule, you'll see there's lots of bristles there, meaning that it's, the brush is firm, but as it uh, starts to migrate towards the tip, it gets finer, which basically means I can hold more product. So I can draw this leaf and I can fill it in because there's enough density in the brush for it to hold the product. Now with a liner brush, um, especially one as short as this, I can get in really good detail but I can't draw for very long without having to reload my brush and I'm going to go outside of the lines right now just so I can show you guys how to fix that later. So one of my favorite brushes for uh, contouring or for fixing your mistakes is this pointed one from I think it's Tati but that's not all it's good for. Now the reason I say learning your brushes is important because with this brush you can also use other techniques like drawing flower petals. 
So even though this brush does come to a point, you can see that when I add pressure, of course I widen the stroke. So now you can kind of understand why I had you guys go through different exercises. You really do need to know what your brushes can do in order to know what you can achieve. There's nothing wrong with using tools that kind of do some of the work for you. Yet again, this is another one of those brushes that comes to a point, but when you give uh, pressure, it definitely broadens to a wider brush stroke. This is another one that's good for flower petals of, you know, a different kind of species. And don't worry guys, I will be showing you some nail designs coming up in this series that really demonstrate how to achieve a look. This is just to show you um, a basic outline of what you can do. So make sure that you subscribe because this is next week's tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get perfect lines, but in the meantime, make sure that you practice everything that we went over in this video. And remember, practice does not make perfect, but it makes better. See you in the next one, guys.